This is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. Welcome to today's tutorial video. We're looking at a 1941 Royal Aristocrat. This one is in brown, but um, even if yours is black um, or, or gray, it doesn't really matter. This is just to show you how to use it. And even if you have um, like a 42, or something like that within a couple of years, it's gonna operate exactly the same. So um, grab your typewriter, get it set up, and then let's walk through it together. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the back, we're gonna work our way forward, and hopefully I'll remember to do everything. Usually I leave out something, but that's why it's great to go back and watch the other tutorial videos. What I recommend is just like doing a search on our channel for Aristocrat and then just watch all the different video tutorials on Aristocrat. Or um, our video, our YouTube channel is organized um, by playlists by um, the manufacturer, Royal and then by the decade. So you could look at all the 1940s royals if you want, and it just kind of still gives you an idea. It's always good to watch tutorial videos because you learn something new from each one. Okay, so the first thing is, is let me flip this guy up. And back here, you are gonna see these tabs and you can press and drag them, and it's hard for me to do it with the typewriter in this position, so I'm gonna put it back down. Those are your tab settings, and so you just press and drag to move your tabs to where you want them, okay? Now, if you flip this back, this is your margins, and you just press and drag. Um, but you also have um, a magic margin on the left side. And what that means is instead of flipping this back, you can put your carriage where you want it, bring it forward, you'll hear this little click. And so now your margin is there. If you wanna release that margin, you hold it and release the carriage at the same time and you can move it out. Now to release your carriage, I guess I should have told you that first, on either side of your carriage, this is your carriage, is a lever. Here's one here, here's one here, and it doesn't matter which one you press in, they both release your carriage, okay? And you can just go back and forth. Now your carriage is only gonna move as far as you have your margins set. You can see where I put it all the way at the end here and where this one is. So I'm gonna bring mine in and on the left side, I'm gonna bring it here. We're gonna make our margins a little narrow um, just for a typing demo, but you're gonna set your margins based on the paper you're using. Okay, over here on, um, hold on, let me, I just realized I don't have a light on. Oops, I don't know if that helps it or not. I don't think so, but okay. So right here is a paper release, All right? This is a paper holder and this holds the paper taut against the roller. Over on the left side, this is, I believe, hold on. One is gonna be your line selector. 
Yep, that's your line selector. So that's double space, single line, double line. This is gonna release your ruler. This is, um, some people call it variable spacing. Um, and I'll show you that here in just a second. In fact, why don't we go ahead and load a piece of paper? And so to load your paper, you're gonna wanna load it right behind this roller and just set it right here and then turn your handle and it should pull through very easily. Now, what I like to do is I like to come all the way to the top and make sure it's even and you can see mine's just a little uneven and that's where this paper release comes in handy. I pull that forward straighten out my paper, re-engage it. You really need to re-engage it because otherwise it's going to be, your paper is going to be really loose inside of there and it's going to um, scoot all around. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we can go back up here and you can see where my margin is set there and it's set there, okay? Now, variable spacing, when you turn the handle of this roller, you'll hear it click every half of a line. But sometimes you're just like, I don't, I wanna kinda go in between that. And that's where this variable spacing comes in handy. You pull that forward, and then you can kinda adjust it and put it exactly where you want. Okay, now I am gonna, let's go look on the inside of this. So I'm gonna move my carriage over to the left and I do that just to make sure that this handle is not in the way of the cover. So to open the cover, you just wanna give it a good pull. And inside, you will see the tight bars um, and the basket here. You see the spools. This uses a universal ribbon. We get this question all the time. Do you carry a spool for such and such? And most typewriters, not all, but most use what is called a universal ribbon and you can find them anywhere. We have them available on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and a universal ribbon is one that is a two inch spool with a half inch ribbon and you can have a single color or a double color. And it, the colors actually are just entirely up to you. It doesn't have to be a certain color. The standard is black and red. So they're super easy to load. You just lift them out and pop them in. And then, um, well, and so then I have an up close photo of this area right here. And what you um, can do is go to the description below. There's a product listing link. Go to that and you can see the photos. You can bookmark that photo of this whole area. And that way you can use that as reference for threading your ribbon through. Now, when you do thread your ribbon, make sure it comes up this way and around. Same with this side, up this way and around. Now, when you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink on the ribbon, so you need to reverse the direction. And some ribbons have a grommet on them that will auto-reverse, and it also depends on the typewriter. Um, and, but if you need to manually reverse your ribbon, this is the reversal right here, and you just go back and forth. And you should be able to reverse the direction of that ribbon a lot before you need to change it out. Um, and what I mean by a lot, I'm talking like 30, 40, 50, 60 times that you're going to reverse the direction of that ribbon. And how do you know when it's time to change your ribbon? Well, the ink will just start not becoming readable or it's not as dark as you like. Now, one way to tell when you need to reverse the direction of your ribbon is some typewriters will just stop typing but others will keep typing, but you'll notice that the ribbon gets really tight. You can see it pulling, and then the font starts to get faint, or it just starts to feel weird. It's not typing like it should, and your fingers are gonna tell you a lot of things as you get to know your typewriter. So when any of that happens, I always say stop, don't panic, um, reverse the direction of your ribbon, and start typing, and nine times out of 10, that's gonna resolve your issue. Okay, um, let's go ahead and close this. And I'm gonna lift this up and let's take a look here. So right here is your color selector. Right now it's on red, there's black, and then down here is a white um, 
uh, dot. Now that is means stencil. It's not going to do anything for you. In fact, if it's on that white dot, your typewriter is not going to type well. So if reversing your ribbon doesn't do it, it doesn't fix the issue, double check and make sure that you're not set on the white setting. That actually happens to me quite often because these tend to get bumped. And um, so whenever I start having issues, I always check two things, make sure I'm not on the stencil setting and I reverse the direction of my ribbon. And as I said, that usually fixes whatever issues I'm having. Now this middle area is called the touch control. And what that does is you just adjust it. It determines how hard these type bars right here are gonna strike your paper. Really has to do with personal preference. For example, my husband has a very heavy hand when he types. So he'll have one setting and I have a very light touch. So I would have a different setting and it really has to do with um, Yes, the touch can, that's why it's called touch control based on your personal preference. So you just, some people can tell a difference, other people can't. And uh, that's okay, you just work with it and see what you like. Okay, down here, here's your keys. You have um, glass keys um, and they should be in pretty good condition. These last very well. These were very well made. Um, <laughs> things, things were just made to last before, you know, they, they didn't expect you to turn over your typewriter every year and get a newer model. They were made to last for generations, obviously, since this one's from 1941. Okay. It's older than my parents. So, okay. So here's your backspace. Now, just so you know, backspace does not erase. It is not a delete button. It's a backspace button. Um, over on this side, you'll see a tab. Okay. And I showed you where to set the tabs in the back. And tabs are like columns. Some people use them. Some people don't. I never use my tab. Um, you can use it to create columns or to indent paragraphs, whatever you want. Um, down here is your shift. So the big rectangle is the shift. The circle is the lock. And so for this one, you have to press in a little bit. Hold on. Oh, the shift lock on my typewriter isn't working, but it should hold it down. And then to release it, you just hit the, either one of the big ones and that'll release it. My apologies that the shift lock is not working on my typewriter. Okay, and then over here you'll see a round key that says M-A-R-R-E-L. That's margin release. And what that is, once you've set your margins, there's the end, there's the end. In fact, I'm going to bring mine in just a little bit. So that bell will go off when you get to your margin. And what happens is when you reach your margin, your typewriter is going to stop and you might be in the middle of a word. And that's when that margin release comes in handy. You just press that and then you can finish your word. So that is how you use uh, a 1941 Royal Aristocrat. I am going to um, type a few sentences on here so you can hear it. Um, and then also, let me show you where the, um, I don't see it. Let me show you where the serial number is. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, yes, so you do need, a, in this case, you do need a flashlight and you may even need a pair of glasses because these are, it's really tiny print. But right back here, on the left side is a little opening in the frame and underneath that is stamped in the, the actual metal frame underneath that is the serial number. It's pretty tiny, so I had to get some glasses to read them and to see them. They're, sometimes they're hard to find and hard to read. And then you can go to typewriterdatabase.com and um, there is a little bit of a learning curve on learning that that website, but it's worth it. And you can find out some information on your typewriter as to when it was manufactured. And you can even create your own little, um, uh, 
account and upload pictures of your typewriter. There's a lot of people you can search and see other people's typewriters. They're 1941 Royal Aristocrat and compare yours to theirs. So there's a lot of fun information on that website. And so hopefully you'll find that helpful. All right, so we're going to sign out by um, just typing a few lines for you. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And have a blessed day.